Dr. Joe Stone Parish Council. Um, just to say that you know, in a hundred years' time, if the SMP is allowed, this is where the top of the cliff is going to be, right here where I'm standing now. And the issue is obviously as we go down towards the cliff, we'll sort of show you where the various points are. But there you have Overstrand Methodist Chapel, designed by Lutchins, absolutely, absolutely unique, the only one he ever designed, uh, and that will go in a hundred years' time. I'm the local district councillor. Um, I'm explaining to John Flack and Vicky Ford today the difficulties we have with coastal slump in this particular part of the coast. This is Overstrand in North Norfolk. If you look at this here, you can see that new looking bit of sand. Now, two years ago, you could only see two feet of that. Bit by bit, all the way along the cliff, you can see new bits of sand. This is showing how instead of the sea actually causing problems and erosion here, other than to clear up the mess, it's the water that is retained in the cliffs is pushing the cliffs down, out and down. As I understand, it's the specific geology of this part of the coast it where is. you have the soil on the top and then a layer of clay before you get down uh, uh, further shore causing the rotation of slip. That's right, and once that water, you get heavy rainstorm in particular, a couple of weeks later, you can guarantee that the water has been retained in that clay and turned it into a skid pack. And the whole thing pushes down the thump. And then, of course, the sea takes away at the toe at the bottom. But as we go further down, you will see that we have what we call gabions here which actually hold the cliff back and they are um, flints that are actually held in, in wire netting. Yep. Now, we had a heavy storm here two years ago and even the gabions were pushed out. Where we are standing right now, the storm in November 2007, um, this was actually where the sea was breaking was coming right up here. We had a, you know, the one in 50 years. Um, it was the one where, where Yarmouth was on alert. In fact, it caught back to the Environment Agency got that wrong. Um, but it was the one in 50 years storm with a, a strong northwesterly, and of course, we got hit really badly. Yeah. It was nearly as bad as the city. But you know, uh, Vicky Ford and I are here today not only to listen to you, but also yeah. to make it very clear that we do not accept the principle of managed retreat. We, we think are. that it, on principle it's wrong and that the land should be defended. We are so relieved to hear you saying that. This is what we've been wanting to hear ever since the Stretched Shoreline Management Plan was published in 2004. Up until that particular moment in time, this coast was going to be defended. Now, I don't call it managed retreat, I call it that. Absolutely. And I'm so pleased to hear what you're saying. Well, we'll do what we can. Thank you. Yeah, we have what we call a, a tow wall, which the problem we were talking about with the rotational slump, where the, the, the land saturates with the spring water coming through and then um, slides. By putting a tow wall at the base of it, you can stop the, um, that actual slide, which is the principle of these, uh, these gabions. Overstrand Shoreline Management Committee is looking at various avenues that we can uh, tackle the uh, processes that are being put forward in the Shoreline Management Plan. And one of the things that we're looking at is a legal challenge based on the Human Rights Act in that the way the process of the SMP has been carried out is actually flawed and by such as infringed individuals' human rights. So I am here in Overstrand on the Norfolk coast where we've been learning about coastal erosion from local residents, our parliamentary candidate Trevor Ivory and a lot of local councillors. And it is not an easy issue for them. I mean, it's not only people's homes falling into the sea, but there's also a complete madness to me of not maintaining your coastal defences. So for, you know, what isn't actually a huge amount of money in terms of maintaining coastal defences, you've put a whole local economy, especially in tourism and farming, at risk. And the maths of the cost versus the benefit just doesn't add up.
to, to the layman. Um, but the government's done a consultation that doesn't seem to take into account a huge amount of the economic benefits. Um, and as a result, they think that we can just have the planned retreat of our coastline. That's not the solution that I think is right. And on, on top of that, um, we've seen a, a really piecemeal approach to sea defences. So they'll defend one bit here, and then another bit here, and then you'll get a bay in the middle of undefended coastline that is just going to get more and more of a problem as that starts to fall into the sea as well. So that's mad. And then there's another issue that other European countries you're not allowed to dredge within 20 kilometres of the coastline. But here we've heard that they are dredging gravel from very close to the coastline um, and obviously other bits of sand and gravel are then falling into that holes and that dredging is happening in the spawning grounds for fish, especially the place. So maybe that's another reason why the place stocks are going down, say the fishermen. So there's some really, really big questions here. It's very clear that no one is taking responsibility, that we have a government that is just passing the buck from one quango to another quango, no overall plan. You know, the country is in a brave, desperate economic circumstances, so trying to find extra money will be difficult. But I've promised to go and look at what existing funds are there how can we find out how other countries access, for example, EU money to see whether or not we can get into those pockets of money that already exist? Um, I've promised to ask why don't we do proper impact assessments on what happens at sea? Because, um, for example, the dredging, if you were doing that on land, you'd have to do a whole impact assessment, but not to sea. I've promised to go and find out whether through the fisheries policy now, a lot wrong with the common fisheries policy but shouldn't those fisheries um, bureaucrats from Brussels be looking into the issues of dredging in our place spawning grounds so I hope there's a few things I can do to help here it's very clear that it needs a joined up approach and maybe um, if you're elected to cover the whole of the region here you may be able to help join up um, some of the difficult patches along the coast while we have this issue.